Sally says, don't forget to bring a towel. Okay. Thanks, Tally. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 South Park episodes. They took my job! They took your job! Mom, this is degrading! Ah, goddammit! Imagination! For this list, we're looking at the most hilarious, iconic, and surprisingly important episodes of this animated series. Keep in mind, we will be counting two or three parters as one episode, so don't be surprised if you see instances when multiple episodes are being covered. What's your favorite South Park episode? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Raisins Long before kids broke up via text, you had to send a friend to do it in person. Raisins marked the end of Stan and Wendy's relationship, at least for several seasons. Through Stan's loss, the show got two of its best additions. Butters falls in love with a waitress at Raisins, which is like Hooters minus the, um, well, the title is self-explanatory enough. Meanwhile, a depressed Stan falls in with the goth kids, who stemmed from what was supposed to be a throwaway line written by Trey Parker. Oh, Jesus Christ, I had to see it to believe it. What the hell are you doing? Breathing deep the darkness that envelops my soul. Both storylines collide in an unexpectedly touching resolution, where Butters teaches Stan that heartbreak isn't easy, but it's something we all need to cope with rather than give up on being happy ever again. The only way I could feel this right now is if I felt something really good before. So I have to take the bad with the good. So I guess what I'm feeling is like a beautiful sadness. I guess that sounds stupid. Yeah. No. No, Butters, that doesn't sound stupid at all. Number 19, Margarine. I warn you, these images may be too shocking for young children. Okay, I'm not looking. Poor Butters. In addition to having the worst parents in the world, his friends always just use him as a pawn in their plans. If we can get somebody invited to that slumber party, not only can we get a hold of the device, but find out how to use it. In this case, the boys make Butters fake his death so he can infiltrate a girl's sleepover and learn the secrets of their mythical cootie catcher. <coughs> Part of what makes this episode so uproarious is how it goes to increasingly dark places, especially when Butters' parents try to resurrect him. Don't you worry. Daddy's gonna make everything all right again. In the midst of all Butters' suffering, though, at least he has a pretty good time at the slumber party. Maybe he should have just kept pretending to be Margarine. Uh, I guess you're probably a little surprised you see me. It isn't right! Make it go away! Number 18, The Losing Edge. You want a piece of me? Because I'm pretty sick of your goddamn mouth. What do you want to do, huh? Let's be honest. When it comes to Little League Baseball, the parents are usually more invested than the kids. For the South Park cows, they just want to get the season over with so they can return to video games. After making it to the big time, the team decides to purposely throw the game, which isn't as simple as it sounds. As the cows fail at losing, Randy rises to the top in the unofficial league of trash-talking dads alongside his arch-rival, Bat Dad. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's debatable when Randy officially became the show's resident scene stealer, but the losing edge contains some of his funniest moments. Drunk, stripped down to his underwear, and providing future meme fodder, Randy's exploits make this episode a contender. This is America! This is America! Number 17, The Passion of the Jew. After being referenced in the two previous episodes, Kyle finally caves and watches Mel Gibson's The Passion. Kyle is horrified by what he sees on the screen, questioning his religion and if Cartman may have been right all along. As Stan and Kenny show Kyle, though, Mel Gibson might not be the wise sage he's been built up as. If anything, he probably belongs in a Cocoa Puffs commercial. <laughs> With this episode predating many of Gibson's most controversial and bizarre moments, South Park became one of the earlier shows to say, there might be something a little off about this guy. The Passion of the Jew has only gotten more timely with age, but even upon release, it was praised by multiple Jewish outlets. Run, dude, run! Kapla! Kapla! And good evening, a friend! Number 16, Christian Hard Rock. From Judaism to Christianity, no religion is safe from South Park. The true target in Christian Hard Rock, however, are musicians and their ultimate first world problem being slightly less extravagantly wealthy due to their songs being illegally downloaded. This is the home of Lars Ulrich, the drummer from Metallica. Look, there's Lars now sitting by his pool. What's the matter with him? 
This month he was hoping to have a gold-plated Shark Tank bar installed right next to the pool, but thanks to people downloading his music for free, he must now wait a few months before he can afford it. Copyright infringement only became more prominent following this episode's release with the rise of YouTube. While Stone and Parker agree that artists deserve to be properly compensated, South Park was one of the first shows to be downloaded for free online, which raised the show's profile. We're gonna sit here and protest with you until free downloading stops, yeah! Tom, it appears now the musician strike is growing! As I'm speaking, more musicians are arriving! The moral encourages artists to focus less on every penny and more on every fan they gain. The episode also has some of the show's catchiest tunes, most notably The Body of Christ. If only we could hear the full versions. Number 15. The Coon Trilogy the modern superhero craze was in full swing by 2010, and South Park provided its two cents in epic fashion. Superheroes are not the only source of satire, as these episodes reference everything from My Neighbor Totoro to H.P. Lovecraft to Chuck Jones. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> the comedy and suspense build with each entry, developing several compelling mysteries. Simply trying to figure out who's behind every mask amounts to one of the best running gags. The spotlight belongs to two heroes in particular, though. Mysterion, whose backstory is fleshed out along with his alter ego, Kenny. Then there's Mintberry Crunch, who literally ends up stealing the show and the glory. Dude, I'm sorry, but we still aren't getting it. You're half man and half berry? While not every question is answered, this ambitious trilogy added new layers to the South Park mythos. Hello, Cthulhu. I heard you haven't been. Very nice. Number 14, Cartoon Wars Parts 1 and 2. South Park or Family Guy? It's a question many adult animation fans asked in 2006, although it's not one that Stone and Parker welcome. While both tackle edgy subjects, South Park is more story-driven, while Seth MacFarlane's cartoon is mainly in it for the jokes, whether they're relevant or not. Come on, Muhammad, let's get some tea. Try my Mr. T. T. Cartman notes the difference in the first half of this two-parter, which received applause from Simpsons and King of the Hill staff members. Parker and Stone thus paid homage to them in part two, which also takes self-aware shots at the South Park formula. I mean, I know it's just joke after joke, but I like that. At least it doesn't get all preachy and up its own ass with messages, you know? Whichever show you prefer, censorship is the common enemy, which is something that's become even more relevant as the years have gone by. Number 13, Woodland Critter Christmas. And on that magical day, stumbling upon all of that, was a surprise little boy in a red poofball hat. What the hell? The South Park staff have a rule that if they do a Christmas episode, it can't just be phoned in. Woodland Critter Christmas remains the gold standard, although the episode's production was hell to get through. Coming off Team America, Parker and Stone were drained by the end of season eight. After days of brainstorming and coming up with nothing, they settled on John Denver and the Muppets meets Event Horizon. As rushed as the production was, you'd never suspect this watching the episode. Wait, what, what? You've done us a huge favor, Stanny! Without the mountain lion around, Lady Porcupine can give birth to the Antichrist! Yay! Yay! With an ingenious rhyming scheme and unpredictable twists, the episode came together in true Christmas miracle fashion. It also works as a clever send-up of classic Christmas specials, albeit with more swearing, graphic imagery, and satanic animals. <laughs> Number 12. Butter's Very Own Episode by season five's conclusion, Butters had developed into a favorite character of Parker, Stone, and fans. Everyone knows it's Butters! That's me! Taking a sabbatical from Kenny, the creators decided to have Butters fill the fourth friend slot. Before being promoted to main player status, Butters was given center stage in his very own episode. On the surface, the episode seems a lot like Butters. Sweet, charming, and full of innocence. Inspector Butters gets all the facts. I even got some neat old pictures. However, what starts off like a Leave it to Beaver episode quickly dissolves into South Park territory as we learn more about the Stotch family. This hilariously contrasts Butters' optimistically naive personality as he fails to realize how monstrous his parents are. It proved that Butters was more than capable of carrying a show, and his star rose from there. I'm gonna be okay. Really? No, I'm lying. Let's go, son. Uh, coming, Dad. Everyone knows it's Butters! That's me! 
Number 11. The Return of the Fellowship of the Ring to the Two Towers This is Lord of the Rings! Coming out about a month before the Two Towers hit theaters, this episode brought Middle Earth to South Park. Stone and Parker have often said that some of their favorite episodes are simply about the kids being kids. This episode takes us back to a more innocent time when playing make-believe almost felt real. For the boys, returning the Lord of the Rings to the video store evolves into a rousing quest. We were almost killed! A dark wizard must be trying to stop us! True, someone or something doesn't want this video returned to the video store! What they don't realize is that the video has been switched with an adult film, attracting the attention of their parents and ringwraith-like sixth graders. Perhaps what's most impressive about this episode is that it manages to satirize a three-part epic in just 22 minutes, faithfully recreating several scenes and turning Butters into Gollum. My movie! My awesome cool movie! My precious. Number 10, 200 and 201. Shockingly, I've just been slandered once again in the town of South Park. In these landmark episodes that mark the show's 200th and 201st episodes respectively, South Park pays homage to its best moments with the return of fan-favorite characters and practically every celebrity the show has ever parodied. If anybody has a gripe against that shithole, it's me! They all tie into a clever, albeit controversial story, in which Tom Cruise, Rob Reiner, and other big names threaten to sue the town unless they deliver the taboo prophet Muhammad. Once we have Muhammad, we can take his power from him! After 200 resulted in a threat from a radical Muslim group, Comedy Central heavily censored the follow-up 201. Oh, thank God. Hey, Muhammad. Really sorry about all this, dude. Nevertheless, both episodes still effectively enforce the message that no public figure should be off-limits when it comes to satire. You see, I learned something today. Throughout this whole ordeal, we've all wanted to show things that we weren't allowed to show. Plus, we finally learn who Cartman's real father is. No, please! Tell him! You almost did before, but you got shot by your brother who was a Bronco fan! Tell him! It's true. Jack Tenorman was your father. Number 9. Good Times with Weapons South Park isn't exactly known for cutting-edge animation. The creators have even made fun of the show's simplistic style. The season 8 premiere gave the animators an opportunity to demonstrate what they're capable of. And now I use my power to... Turn Kyle into a chicken! Bleh! God damn it, Cartman! <laughs> now you are a chicken! Nya, 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 nya. While still working within limitations, Good Times with Weapons is among the show's best-looking episodes. The animators lovingly envision the boys as anime characters after weapons fuel their ninja fantasy. When Butters gets caught in the crossfire, though, reality sets back in. The contrast between the real world and the role-playing leads to several hilarious transitions. As the boys get caught up in their violent game, the adults remain clueless until something sexual arises. In the wake of Super Bowl 38, the episode encouraged parents everywhere to get their priorities straight. You see the damage you've caused, Eric Cartman? What were you thinking? I told you it was a wardrobe malfunction. Number 8. The Black Friday Trilogy But soon we will be fighting the greatest battle of our young hot lives. Winter is coming. And the next-gen gaming devices are hitting the shelves. You think Game of Thrones is brutal? You should see them all on Black Friday. This three-part epic that consists of the episodes Black Friday, A Song of Ass and Fire, and Titties and Dragons takes a long, hard look at the dark side of consumerism as the boys devise a plan to achieve discounts on next-gen consoles. But if we plan, strategize, and fight together, we can be the first people inside on Black Friday and use the 80% to get the gaming systems we need to survive. The question is whether they should buy Xbox Ones or PS4s. Everyone who wants to get PS4s join with us. No, we can't divide like this! What, no love for Nintendo Wii U? While Sony and Microsoft go to war, Randy prepares for winter, George R.R. R. Martin procrastinates, Sure, you said peaches were coming! Yeah, yeah, they're on their way! And Princess Kenny reigns supreme. Wow, Kenny's a Japanese princess. Yay! Firing on all cylinders, the Black Friday trilogy dishes out ingenious references, commentary, twists, and even a tie-in to the Stick of Truth video game. Like, like this! We can just play with this! Number 7, Casa Bonita. What's Casa Bonita? Dude, haven't you ever been there? It's a big Mexican restaurant, but they have like cliff jumpers and Black Bart's Cave and all kinds of stuff! Eric Cartman will go to insanely drastic lengths over the most insignificant things. In that sense, this episode perfectly sums up his character. 
Upon learning that Kyle has invited Butters to his birthday party at Casa Bonita instead of him. You've always been a dick to me, Cartman, and I'm not inviting you. Cartman vows to take his place. God damn it, I have to get invited to go! He tricks the gullible Butters into believing a meteor is headed for Earth and locks him in a bomb shelter. It's nothing short of priceless watching Cartman take extreme measures to keep this ruse going, as everyone else panics over Butters' disappearance. Tom, it has now been three days since the Stotts child has gone missing. Townspeople continue to search, but hope is dwindling. Even when Cartman faces his inevitable downfall, he refuses to let anything stand in his way of this real-life Mexican restaurant. Well, kid, you made an entire town panic, you lost all your friends, and now you're going to juvenile hall for a week. <laughs> Was it worth it? Totally. Number 6. Osimo. Oh boy, I've never gotten a package this big. I've always wanted to have a huge package. Given all the hell Cartman has put Butters through, it's only appropriate that Eric gets his comeuppance in this hysterical episode. When Cartman dresses up as a robot to learn Butters' embarrassing secrets. Yes, you can trust Asimo. In fact, you should tell Asimo all your most personal secrets. He finds out that Butters actually knows one of his secrets. And if Cartman ever messes with me again, I'm gonna show that video to everybody. Then I'll have my revenge, boy howdy! Now Cartman must fully commit to his role in order to avoid humiliation. Although we don't see Cartman's face for much of the episode, it's hilarious just to imagine what's running through his head as he digs himself deeper and deeper into trouble. Hey guys, great news! It's all been arranged, you two are both going to Los Angeles to visit Butter's Aunt Nellie! Oh boy, my robot gets to come with me to see Aunt Nellie! What? Despite his best efforts, it's the tiniest of errors that ultimately exposes him. I think maybe one day we can all... Wait a minute, did, did that robot just fart? Hey, robots don't fart. Uh, now ending fart sequence. Oh, and it, it smells too! Smell sequence initiated. Number 5. All About Mormons I'm really excited to live in this town and share all kinds of great experiences with you, my new friends! Oh, dude, what a little asshole. Yeah, screw that kid. Before Matt Stone and Trey Parker were a hit on Broadway with The Book of Mormon, they made this classic South Park episode. When a Mormon family moves to town, people are completely bewildered by how unusually nice they are. Well, that's great you could join us for family home evening, Stan. What's that? That's when we don't allow any TV and just entertain each other with music and stories. Stan only becomes more judgmental as he learns the story of Joseph Smith, which he considers dumb, 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 dumb. Dum 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 dum. Many people believe Joseph. Dum 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 dum. Aside from deriving humor from actual Mormon beliefs, the episode also provides a meaningful message about faith. Sure, religion doesn't always make sense, but if it helps you to be a better person without hurting anyone else, who cares what other people think? Look, maybe us Mormons do believe in crazy stories that make absolutely no sense. And maybe Joseph Smith did make it all up. But I have a great life, and a great family, and I have the Book of Mormon to thank for that. Number 4. Trapped in the Closet But I'm being joined now by famous singer-songwriter R. Kelly. Well, I was just standing here, and Tom Cruise locked himself in the closet. Being a show that's not afraid to tackle any subject matter, it isn't shocking that South Park has riled up so much controversy. Trapped in the Closet is arguably the most controversial episode of all. Taking on the Church of Scientology and poking fun at Tom Cruise's sexual orientation, Dad! Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet! The episode naturally pissed off numerous parties. It even led to the departure of Isaac Hayes, who provided the voice of Chef. Hello, Eric! Hey, Chef! I made some chili to enter into the contest. Despite this, it remains one of the show's boldest half-hours, which, over the years, has come to be seen as less of a shot at Scientology and more of an advocate for free speech. I, I realize that, to really be a church, we can't charge people for help. What are you, stupid? Then how do we make money from those people? Number 3. The Imagination Land Trilogy What is this place? This is Imagination Land. It's where all the wonderful and goofy things that humans have made up over the years live together! Of all the multi-part episodes South Park has done, this Emmy-winning trilogy stands out as a magnum opus. Imagination Land is certainly one of the show's most ambitious and cinematic outings, as imagination itself is threatened. In addition to providing one great laugh after another, I stand before you with dry balls, Your Honor. Imagination Land constantly leaves you at the edge of your seat not only wondering where the story will go, but also which imaginary character will make an appearance next. They even make room for our favorite woodland critters. Nobody here has AIDS! In the end, we get a unique moral regarding the importance of imagination 
and the impact many of these fictional characters have had on us. I really have learned a lot, you guys. What Kyle said about imaginary things being real and Butters using his imagination, it makes me think that, well, maybe we all have the power to make things a reality. Number two, make love, not Warcraft. Who is that guy? Whoever he is, he is one tough badass. South Park has produced a variety of video game related episodes, and this is by far the most ingenious. When a griefer starts claiming innocent lives in the world of Warcraft, the boys decide to band together. We've learned that the four of us can't fight him alone, but if we all log in together, we might have a chance. As their characters level up into unstoppable warriors, they're reduced to slobs with no lives. Ma'am! Bathroom! What, hon? Bathroom! Much like an RPG, this episode manages to take something as uneventful as sitting at a computer screen and turn it into an absorbing adventure. No! Leave me alone! Don't leave me! Ah! The story both satirizes the World of Warcraft fanbase while also embracing the franchise. It's only made funnier by the fact that Blizzard Entertainment contributed to the CG animation. Stan! Dad, not now! Stan, I've been sent here to bring you this. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Aspen. Pet Cemetery meets Total Recall meets every ski movie. What's your name, Hotshot? Stan Marsh. Stan Marsh? <laughs> Stan Darsh is more like it. The Ring. Even before Disney owned everything, Mickey was a boss. Let's be strong, guys. Hello, sir. How was your trip? What's all this I'm hearing about not wearing the purity rings, huh? <laughs> but out. Believe it or not, Rob Reiner found the episode funny. Butter! What'd he say? Butter! Tweak and Craig, the relationship no one knew they wanted until it happened. The world we face is not so big, not if we are strong like Tweak and Craig. More crap, and this is why South Park has multiple Emmys. This was something I made, something that came from me, that was a, a part of me. The only thing I ever made that was any good. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Scott Tennerman must die. It's interesting that the absolute best South Park episode would also be one of the simplest. Cartman, you are so goddamn stupid, it's unbelievable. There's no moral or commentary on our society. It's essentially just a cat and mouse game as Cartman tries to get back at Scott Tennerman for selling him his pubes. Uh, ah, God damn it! After watching Cartman continually fail miserably in his revenge plot, it's the twist ending that makes this episode. Yes, I'm afraid this isn't your chili, Scott. I switched it with chefs. We won't give it away here, but let's just say it elevates the story to another level of comedic genius, and Cartman to another level of psychopath. After a night with the hacksaw, I was all ready to put on my chili gun carnival so that I could tell you personally about your parents' demise. You'll also never look at a bowl of chili the same way again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.